Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, we've got another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master. Thank you so very much for joining me today. Uh, as we continue the theme that we began on Monday, and that is the other little ships. When Jesus was with his disciples and they crossed the Sea of Galilee, we are told that Jesus ship, the ship that Jesus was on with his disciples was not the only ship that was caught up in the storm. As Jesus was crossing the Sea of Galilee, we are told in verse 36, Mark chapter four, that there were other little ships. And this is a detail that only the gospel of Mark tells us, that there were other little ships. And we've been looking at these other little ships. Um, membership, the importance of being connected to a church. Membership is so important. Now we're going to look at another little ship, and that is the ship called worship. Worship. Worship is important. Worship is one of the other little ships. And notice what I'm doing this week is I'm looking at important words that are important for the Christian that have the word ship in them so that you will know that uh, when you're following Jesus, that there should be some other little ships that should accompany you as you follow Jesus. One is, of course, membership, and the other is worship. Now, worship is fundamental to the Christian. Uh, it is the one thing that we should always prioritize. Um, there are other things, of course, the Christian should be doing, such as evangelism and justice work and blessing other people. But but everything that we do in life should be the consequence or the result of our worship of God. Now, what does worship mean? Worship fundamentally means exalting God's greatness, exalting God's greatness. In our mind, we can have problems and challenges and we can uh, begin to exalt those challenges and problems and think, you know what, they're so overwhelming that uh, I will never be able to overcome them. And anytime you have a challenge or a problem that you have so exalted that you think that they cannot be overcome, let me tell you what you are guilty of. You're guilty of a sin called idolatry, idolatry. And that is substituting your problem or your challenge for God are putting your challenge and problem uh, in a place where God only belongs. I'm not minimizing challenges and problems, but I am maximizing the power of God. And worship is simply reminding yourself, sometimes in a song or a scripture or a sermon or a testimony of the greatness of God, exalting the greatness of God. Now, worship is something that we do, of course, publicly. We have public worship because of COVID-19. Many of us have had to worship online. But even when you worship online, that is public worship. And then there is private worship when you are off to yourself. And any time that you're off to yourself and you're thinking about the greatness of God, the power of God, the magnificence of God, that is an act of worship. Now, you don't have to have music for that to happen. In fact, all the music in, in when we gather for public worship is designed to do is to help facilitate our thinking about the greatness of God. Worship, that's one of those other little ships. And it's an important little ship. Why? Because in life we have, and we have two options. One option is we can, here it is, worry, or we can worship. Here's another option. We can praise or we can panic. And when we tend to praise God, we tend to panic less. When we tend, when we worship God, um, we, we worry less. That's what it means to worship, to worship God. Worshiping God is simply focusing on God. And the reason why we should focus on God is because God is focusing on us. God is focusing on us. God is concerned, so intimately concerned about us that God numbers the hairs that are on our head. God is concerned about us. Now, one of the benefits of worship, 
What, how does it benefit us? First of all, let me say this, that it's important to remember that while worship has its benefits to the worshiper, the ultimate purpose of worship is not for the benefit of the worshiper. The ultimate purpose of the worshiper is to exalt God, to praise God. But there are some benefits to the worshiper when we do worship God exalt God's greatness, remind ourselves of the greatness of God. And one of the benefits of worship, I'm going to give you three, but the first would be that worship renews your strength, renews your strength. It's easy to become emotionally and psychologically tired, frustrated. And when that happens, take your mind off your problems, take your mind off your challenges, and begin to worship God because worship renews your strength. Listen to what Isaiah says in Isaiah chapter 40 in verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Worship renews our strength. Let me tell you something else worship does. Worship restores our joy. It renews our strength. Worship restores our joy. Psalm 100 verse 2 reads, listen to Psalm 100 verse 2. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. And when you come before the presence of the Lord with gladness and singing, you will leave the presence of the Lord with gladness and singing because worship restores your joy. Look at Psalm 122 in verse 1. It reads, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Notice what it does not say. It does not say I was mad. It does not say I was sad. It said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Because worship restores your joy. Worship renews your strength. And finally, worship re-engages your God. Worship re-engages your God. Psalm 22 verse 3 reads this. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of his of Israel. Thou who in, thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel, which is the writer's way of saying that God shows up in our praise. It's Paul and Silas, remember we talked about Paul and Silas last week, and they were in the Philippian jail cell, but they began to praise God and sing songs. Maybe since Paul's name begins with a P, maybe Paul prayed. And since Silas's name begins with an S, maybe Silas sung the songs. But whatever, whoever did what, we do know what the consequences was, is that it got God involved in their situation. An earthquake came and their chains were released and people got saved and the whole thing was turned around just by praise and worship. And you want to turn some situations around in your life, then begin to worship and praise God because worship engages your God. Worship is one of those other little ships that's in the caravan that's always connected to Jesus. Now, listen, I want to share with you very quickly three ways you can get the best out of worship. Because many times we go to worship and uh, we, we go in or go in at 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock sharp, and we come out at 12 o'clock dull. We, we come in sharp, leave out dull. Well, you want to come in sharp. You want to leave out even sharper than you came in. And this is how you can get the best out of worship. First of all, preparation. When it comes to worship, prepare yourself. Uh, get yourself mentally ready. In fact, when I was a child, we used to get ready for Sunday morning on Saturday. We would, my father would have me shine my shoes. We would get our clothes ready. We, we, we would do what we had to do to prepare. And then Sunday morning, we would listen to Christian music uh, uh, in the morning, getting ready for worship, preparation. Exodus chapter 19, verses 10 and 11 reads, God said to Moses, go to the people for the next two days. Get these people ready to meet the holy God. Have them scrub their clothes. <laughs> Listen, they're getting ready so that on the third day, they will be fully prepared because on the third day, God will come down on Mount Sinai and make his presence known to all the people. Preparation. Get ready to worship God. Secondly, participation. When you come to worship, participate. 
Don't be zoned out. Don't be thinking about the basketball game or the football game. Make sure that you are all there engaged mentally, emotionally, psychologically, because these are areas of our life that need healing. We need psychological healing, emotionally healing. And to the degree that your emotions are participating of the degrees that your emotions will get blessed. To the degree that your mind is participating is to the degree that your mind will be blessed. To the degree uh, that um, your heart is participating, if you've got a broken heart, is to the degree that your heart will be blessed. Participation. Psalm 34 verse 3 reads thusly, O oh, magnify the Lord, not for me, not for me. In other words, it's not entertainment. Worship is not entertainment. And when I go to worship, I am not uh, an audience to be entertained. And the people who lead in worship are not performers. They are invoking us to participate in the worship of God. Oh, magnify the Lord, not for me, but with me. Let them exalt his name together. No, let us exalt his name together. And remember when I told you what worship is? It is exalting the greatness of God. That was the first thing I said to you, that worship is exalting the, the, the greatness of God, and we must do that together. It must be participatory. And then finally, practice, practice, which is to say that once you are in worship and God illuminates your mind, God gives you a vision, God gives you something to do, Guess what you should do? You should leave worship and practice it. I have a book in my library called What Do You Do After You Say Amen? And what you should do after you say amen, we, it's easy to say amen, but after you say amen, then you go forth and you practice it. Brothers and sisters, one of the ships that is in the caravan that is so important to us is this ship called worship, worship. And it always accompanies Jesus. And we should always prioritize worship because we are, we are basically what we worship. If you worship money, then what happens when you lose your money? Then you lose your joy. If you worship people, then what happens when people let you down? Then you lose your joy. But when you worship God, you are worshiping the one who will never let you down. Many of us are upset with maybe someone or some people and we say, they let me down. Listen, they were not supposed to be holding you up. God is the one that holds you up. And when you exalt God in worship and remind yourself that God is with me, that mountains can be climbed because God is with me and valleys can be called cross because God is with me and sicknesses can be healed because God is with me and bills can be paid because God is with me. And those who have been knocked down can get back on their feet because God is with me. And the rest of my life can be the best of my life because God is with me. And if God be with me, who then can be against me? Because I've got the other little ship called worship. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word today and um, help us, O oh Lord, to make sure that we, when we're crossing the sea of life, that we have that other little ship called membership and worship in the caravan. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Look, everybody needs a church home. We talked about membership yesterday. And if you don't have a church home, I'd like to invite you to become a part of St. Stephen Baptist Church. Look, contact us, uh, email us, newstart at ssclive.org, newstart uh, org. We will get back with you. Today is Wednesday. We will have worship tonight uh, at St. Stephen Church, and I'll be bringing a message tonight. And I hope you'll join us. Uh, as we worship God together and listen to a word that will exalt God's greatness. So join us tonight. The pre-worship experience begins with Sister Chris, Crystal Goodner Spratt at 630, and then we'll have worship and praise, and then I'll bring a word from the word, and I hope you will join us. 
Look, you have a great day the rest of the day. Look forward to seeing you tonight. And uh, until we gather for another powerful point to ponder on tomorrow, don't forget that during COVID-19 to stay safe, stay sane, and never forget that God is still in control. God really is in control. I'll see you tonight in worship.